A lot of people ask me, we know about the Big Bang explosion and how it created the universe, but what existed before the Big Bang? What was there when there was no universe? I often answer with a simple question. Do you know who or what you were before you were born? The universe isn't so different. About 13.8 billion years ago, our universe existed in a tiny singularity. After the Big Bang explosion occurred, time and space came into existence. When there was no universe, there was no space and there was no time. The terms before and after are strictly bounded by the laws of time. That's how we use them. But since there was no time, there was no before either. Time itself was non-existent before the explosion and started counting as the Big Bang occurred. So, when we ask ourselves what existed before the Big Bang, we're asking the wrong question. Throughout our lives, we've grown up knowing there is a past. We know what we did yesterday and the day before that. The human brain is trained in a way that it is hard for us to imagine a universe without a past. Just like it's hard for you to imagine who or what you were before you were born. Physicists Stephen Hawking and James Hartle have tried to answer this question through the Hawking-Hartle model. This model shows that it is possible to create a model of the universe in which asking what happened before the Big Bang is the same as asking, where is the north of the North Pole? According to them, once you go before the Big Bang, time does not exist, and the universe we know becomes pointless in the absence of time. Time as we know it is just one of the universe's properties, and we still need a lot to learn about the nature of time. Long before we knew about genetics and started sequencing the DNA, philosopher John Locke advocated for the blank slate theory. This theory argues that when a child is born, they have no built-in traits. They do not have any beliefs, desires, thoughts, intentions, or a wish of their own. They are like a blank slate. How children study in their early years, what they learn, and the environment they grow up in decides their personality. In general, this theory seems to hold the truth. It is common sense that you need to study astronomy and not animal behavior to become a good astronomer. But the reality is a little different. Has it ever happened that you went to see a doctor and they asked you if anyone in your family has a particular disease? Well, turns out there are various traits that we inherit from our family. Different physical characteristics, such as the bone structure, the color of your eyes, hairs, and how tall you are, are inherited from the family. Also, there are some diseases that run in families. There is no denying that education plays an essential role in who you are, but where you come from also makes a large part of it. Why are we talking about biology? Like the blank slate theory, some theories gave us an early model of the universe. So before we jump toward the Big Bang, the current leading model of the universe in cosmology, we must talk about one of its most prominent historical rivals, the steady state theory. Steady state theory was first put forward by Sir James Jeans in the 1920s. As time passed, more observations came in and the theory was revised by Herman Bondi, Thomas Gold, and Fred Hoyle. Steady state theory argues that the universe is constantly expanding. As it expands, it creates more and more matter by itself. This new matter forms new stars and galaxies at the same rate at which the older ones are becoming unobservable due to the universe's expansion. As a result, the mean density of matter throughout the universe remains the same. So, no matter in which direction you're looking or what your point of observation is, the universe will always look the same. 
Steady state theory further argues that we live in a universe with no beginning and no end. The universe has existed forever and it will exist infinitely. This theory produces a map of the universe that is infinite, with no beginning or end, and does not change with time. Steady state theory was famous in the 1950s, but today, most scientists do not accept it, especially after we started observing the deeper universe. First of all, no new matter is being created out of a thin vacuum. All the new stars and planets being born in the universe are from the matter created in the Big Bang, matter that has already existed for billions of years. Launched in 1968, Orbiting Astronomical Observatory 2 was the first successful space telescope over 54 years ago. Since then, we've launched over 100 telescopes into space and none of them have found traces of new matter being created by itself in space. Today we know a limited amount of matter is present in the universe. As the universe expands, its overall density decreases because the galaxies are being drifted apart by this expansion. Also, based on the observations and how far we can see into the universe in time, our universe seems to have a finite age with a beginning that can be explained by science. We call it the Big Bang Theory. Let me ask you a simple question. How old are you? Really, how old are you? The simple answer is the number of days and years from the time of your birth. That's the human way of looking at it. In a more cosmic way, we are all billions of years old, because that's how old all the atoms in your body are. Edwin Powell Hubble was an American astronomer. While observing distant galaxies in the 1920s, Hubble discovered something that changed the course of astronomy. He found that the light coming from two galaxies located near and far away from Earth isn't the same. The light coming from a galaxy farther away from Earth is more shifted towards the red spectrum than a nearer one. In simple words, the wavelength of light is increasing. It is being stretched before it reaches our planet. This phenomenon is known as redshift. This discovery made him think that something must be happening between Earth and those galaxies, causing the redshift effect. So, what did he do? He observed more galaxies and, surprisingly, noticed the same phenomenon with every galaxy he pointed his telescope towards. He knew that the space between Earth and those galaxies was increasing. In other words, he discovered that the universe was expanding. As a result of this expansion, by the time light reaches Earth, it's shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Hubble published his findings in a paper in 1929. At the time, astronomy wasn't considered a part of physics making him ineligible for a much-deserved Nobel Prize. Just two years later, a Catholic priest and physicist, Georges Lemaitre, coined the idea of the Big Bang. His reasoning was simple. If, at this point in time, the universe is expanding, when we go back in time, the universe must contract. And if you contract the universe enough, it becomes a point. A point of infinite potential. Let's go back in time 13.8 billion years to understand the universe's origin. Everything that exists today, everything that we know and everything that we will ever know is laying somewhere in a tiny bundle of energy. This bundle of energy is smaller than an atom and infinitely dense. We like to call it a point of singularity the energy required to give birth to an entire universe that will have trillions of stars and billions of galaxies is contained within this point of singularity. One day, a species born from the same energy released from the singularity will write about it, because this point of infinite energy isn't stable at all. <laughs>